So tip number one is to use a slow shutter speed to create movement within your images. I think that this adds such an evocative, almost mysterious quality to photos. So tip number two is to create double exposures. Now this can be done in camera or in Photoshop. All right, so tip number three is to capture silhouettes using shadow. So usually I'll do this by a window. I'll have the couple stand in front of the window and just look at one another. And I think this just adds for a lot of drama and adds some mystery to the image. The next tip is one of my personal favorite things to do and that is to utilize negative space. So what I like to do is have the couple be a small part of a wider landscape shot. I think this just adds a quirky element to the images. So tip number five is to add emotion through motion. Cheesy, I know, but it works. So when you give the couple something to do, it just loosens them up and helps them to look more natural. I will tell the couple to slowly walk towards me, but to make it a really loose walk, almost like they've had a few cocktails. Usually they'll just kind of pull each other around and they will start laughing at some point. And this just tends to add a lot more emotion to the images. Okay, so tip number six is to use a prism. On some engagement sessions, I'll go ahead and just take a prism with me and I find that if I shoot through it, it often creates some sort of double exposure look. It's all about just experimenting with it really and sometimes when the light hits it just right, it'll create a rainbow flare. Okay, so tip number seven is to add a voyeuristic quality to your images using foreground. So an easy way to do this is to shoot through plants or maybe through a window. So this just adds more of a mysterious quality to your images. Tip number eight is to embrace the lens flare. Now the key here is to try to be intentional with it. I think a good question is to ask, okay, does this actually add something to the image or is it just more distracting? Sometimes though, it might add a little bit of something. Next tip is to, of course, utilize sunburst. Now, a way I like to do this is I like to have the couple, of course, be backlit and I will have them face each other nose to nose or forehead to forehead. And I will just kind of maneuver my body so that the light is just hitting right in between their you know, noses or foreheads. They're actually blocking the light. So it's controlling the light a little bit more. So I'm not getting a ton of haze and I can still focus in on them. When the light hits just right in between them, I mean, these shots can be absolutely magical. So tip number 10, is to be irreverent. Now, not with the entire wedding day, obviously, but with some shots here and there. I think by shooting with this approach, it often leads to a lot of funkier, cooler looking shots that the couple really ends up appreciating because it's all part of their story. So don't just focus on capturing the pretty and the perfect because honestly, that's kind of, it gets boring after a while. You know, life isn't always pretty or perfect. So it's okay to capture those messes, those messier moments, because again, the couple will really appreciate it because it all is just, part of the great picture of their wedding day story. So tip number 11 is to capture those small details that often go unnoticed. So ironically, it's often the smallest details that end up making the most impact. Okay, so tip number 12 is to shift your perspective. In general, I always recommend moving around your body a lot just to get a lot of different angles and just ask yourself the question, okay, now that I got this safe shot, what can I do to make this photo even more creative? Sometimes all it takes is a simple shift in perspective. And then the next tip is to incorporate the environment. So again, this goes back to using a wider lens if possible or really shooting from a distance to get those really wide shots where the couple is a part of the landscape. All right, so tip number 14 is to play with color. So in general, I really like to incorporate complementary colors in my photos. One of my favorite combinations is blue with orange. So if I'm shooting a beach session, I will advise the couple not to wear anything blue because they will blend into the environment being the sea. So instead I will advise them to wear earthy tones, maybe something like burnt orange or red or even pinks because that will allow them to pop out from the background and it just makes for a more visually interesting photo. So tip number 15 is to use a second shooter. So I will tell the second shooter to go all out with shooting super creatively while I get the more safe shots 
or if I really trust the second shooter, I will tell them to get the safe shots while I take over all the super creative shots. But either way, it adds a ton of creativity and variety to your portfolio. So tip number 16 is to add space between the couple. So oftentimes we will just resort to taking photos of the couple where they are super close together, but sometimes it can be equally powerful and interesting to add some space in between them. Okay, so tip number 17 is to capture reactions. This can be done throughout the entire day, but an example of this is let's say at the reception when the bride is dancing with her dad, get the reaction of the groom as he's watching them. It's always really great to place these photos side by side. Tip number 18 is to ask the couple to dance. Personally, I like to ask them to swing dance because it's always just really fun and interesting to see different people's interpretation of swing dancing and they tend to just have a lot of fun with it and get loose and they just start laughing and it makes for really great images. And tip number 19 is to utilize the veil. In my opinion, using the veil in the forefront of the image just adds a lot of dimension and it gives the photos an ethereal, dreamy quality. Tip number 20, my last and final tip, is to just get really goofy with it. Feel free to experiment and you know just get super artistic and creative with it overall. I know this is a general tip, but I think as long as you just bring that really good energy, it will help to kind of uh, automatically infuse more creativity and fun into your work. So at the end of the day, this is your art and uh, it should be something that allows you to really express yourself and it should be fun overall. Those are my 20 tips on how to get more creative with your wedding photography. All right guys, as promised, I'm going to show you how to create a double exposure within Photoshop. Okay, so I'm clicking on my selection tool and selecting this image, and then I'm going to edit and copy. I'm clicking on my other image, and I'm hitting edit and paste. Now I'm going to edit and free transform to resize this. And now I want to go ahead and change the opacity of this image. Normally I would use multiply, darken, or soft light. Let's say you want to use multiply, but you want to bring in more detail to a part of the image. I would add a layer mask to this layer by clicking on the camera like icon down here. And this right here is the layer mask. Making sure while it's selected, I would go and click on my paintbrush and I would make sure that my color is set to black as black conceals and white reveals. And I want to conceal a part of this top image to show the image underneath it. Using a soft paintbrush and a low opacity, I am gently just going to paint over this. If you want to bring more detail back to this top part of this image, I would change my paintbrush to white because white reveals, and that's just going to bring back in some of what we just erased. Okay, so for comparison here, this is what it looks like with multiply, and this is what it looks like with soft light. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to create a double exposure within camera as well. I'll be using the 5D Mark IV for that. Now, personally, I have the 5D Mark IV and I know it can be done there, so I'll show you how to do it here. So you'll want to go to the red camera icon, toggle over to number three, go down to multiple exposure and enable it. And then you can go down and click either additive, average, bright, or dark. Personally, I use additive the most. And then you can click on the number of exposures. Usually I do two. Those are my 20 tips on how to get more creative with your wedding photography. Hopefully they help. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really makes a difference and I really do appreciate it. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys.